Hello my lovelies, hope you're okay. Um, welcome back here to Busy Bee Budgets. Um, well today is a bit of a different type of video but I just um, realised that I have been cash stuffing now for six months, uh, which I can't believe where the time has gone. Um, and I thought I'd probably just share some of the things that I've learned over the uh, last six months. Um, yeah, and share some of my experiences. So I think if you're someone who's thinking about cash stuffing or early on in your journey, like this might be helpful. Um, or if not, just listen to me waffle for a few minutes about um, everything I think. And so overall, I'm really pleased I started this journey. Um, for those of you who kind of watch my channel regularly, you'll know that I'm someone who's lucky enough to have a high, um, high income. But I think with that just came like an absence of really understanding where my money was going. And although um, I wasn't in debt or I didn't have any kind of significant challenges I didn't have very much left at the end of each month and it was kind of ridiculous given like my high income and also I don't have a crazy lifestyle I don't have expensive cars or a big house or all of those things and I, I guess it was just for me to understand like where my money was going and a lot of what was driving me was about wanting to be more intentional um with everything really like this year I've gone part-time at work um because I want to be more intentional about how I spend my time I wanted to have more control over my life and part of that is having control over money and I think when often when you're um earning a high income but you're in a high pressure job um I was paying a lot for convenience like uh takeaways meals out uh, food on the go like I got lunch at work this week um, and that's the first time I've done her months <coughs> and like it was crazy expensive so I bought a salad and some salmon and some fruit from M&S and it was like 13 pounds and I know prices have gone up but I just I guess I'd forgotten that used to be quite standard like I'd spend 10 to 20 pounds a day on food and a coffee or whatever um and that's just a huge amount of money so I can totally see where my money was going before um so yeah I think doing this process has been really good just being in terms of like the intentionality of it and making sure that I'm even thinking about what my financial goals were. I think during the pandemic, it's just been so difficult for us all to make plans and have any kind of certainty over the future that as we come out of it, I just want to make sure that I'm really, yeah, making the most of my money. Um, like before the pandemic, we often used to have like lovely holidays um, and those types of things. And I think it's just about slowing everything down. Um, and like budgeting was kind of part of that process for me. And I've seen like 2022 is my consolidation year. So um, if you've watched my sinking funds video or any of my other stuff, you know, my sinking funds are really like nicely building. And I know by the end of the year, they kind of will be where I need them to be. And then barring having to dip into them for something, they're kind of going to stay at that level. So next year I see very much that journey towards financial independence kicking in and I can make better investments and use, um, like more of my money for the future as opposed to the present if that makes sense um and yeah at the moment a lot of our money is obviously focusing on bills and those types of things because i know everyone's under massive pressure with all the prices and everything's going up um and those of course will always be be there but like by the beginning of next year i'm hoping that i'll be in a solid enough place that i can start to think about what i want to do with the I wasn't going to say spare money because it's never spare money, is it? But just thinking about more intentional about what I can do to make the most of that money. And I think one of the, um, so I've written a few notes, so like bear with me when I kind of rattle through them. But I think one of the mistakes I made when I first started budgeting was assuming that every month was going to be the same. So in kind of February when I started, I just assumed that that would be the budget rolling forward. And what I quickly got to realise is every month is different. Um, and sometimes it's as basic as some weeks have got four weeks and some weeks have got five months, uh, five weeks in. And, um, you know, it varies about like food and like some of your variable spending. Um, you need more some months than you do others. So that seems really obvious now I've said it, but at the time I didn't really think about that. And I also didn't really think about what I had in a diary or what I have booked in. So for kind of February, March, April, I was fairly consistent. And then I think as the nice weather kicked in, social life started picking up, life returned to somewhat of normal, what I found was months could look really different. And initially I didn't plan in for those differences. So I didn't look at the diary and see what was coming up um, in the month and build my budget according to that. So some people, I know um, Baddies and Budgets talked about zero-based budgeting, 
but I guess that's what I'm now doing is I look at the beginning of the month what have I got in that month that I need to pay for or want to pay for and then building the budget around that rather than just assuming that every month is a flat of course there's some bills which don't change but like in mainly really about my variable um spending so things like um food not so much for me but things like social spending trips away experiences those types of things they do vary a lot and so i think just thinking about that like on a month by month basis like if you look back at some of these earlier months like it's all consistent and of course that's not how life works is it so i think what i've got better at as the six months has gone on is considering what's coming up in the month and thinking about okay like what do i need to like book in for it i think the also thing that's kind of come to light was the importance around um like sinking funds and emergency funds um and so i started off doing um where i would allocate let's see if i've got some so sinking funds like back in march for instance i was trying to put something towards every sinking fund um so like uh house car emergency christmas bets and obviously some of those things are really far away like christmas um and in march we didn't really need to be worrying about them and then others um yeah just like it just i wasn't getting very far so when you're putting 50 pounds in a month and don't get me wrong every little helps and everything does add up but it just feels like you're a long way away so mid like time i switched over to doing um an avalanche or snowball method so what i do now is try to i started with a, my lowest value sinking fund which i think was like uh health and i now um stuff that until that one's stuff so i stuff gifts first then health then bets then car and i'm going to move on to home christmas and, uh, and a fully stuffed emergency so i fully stuffed a number of funds so i now have a nice little um nest egg in the bank um and i have those funds to dip into and i think um that was really important to have some of that a seeing those build on a consistent basis but feeling like i could tick things off the list and for me doing sinking funds one at a time or two at a time is a lot more manageable than trying to stuff all of them all of the time because a your money goes further but also it just can be a bit disheartening where you know you're still quite a way off completing a sinking fund but it feels like you're stuffing it all the time so for me like having those funds was really good and i think another big thing i've got to realize was um about balancing needs versus wants so now when i'm thinking about my weekly cash envelopes or i'm thinking about what i'm going to spend each week um more often than not now when i'm at the shops i think about okay do i need this and therefore i can just write as part of the budget or is this just something i want and so obviously over the year i started off doing the clothing diet so i haven't bought any new clothes since i started budgeting back in february so it's now six months on and i can genuinely say i've not missed it i have still got loads of stuff i haven't worn i don't feel like i'm wearing the same stuff all the time and you know i've just yeah i just haven't spent anything at all on clothes and i wasn't huge spender before but maybe like 50 to 100 pound a month i would say was probably spent on clothes before so that's obviously all going to better places now um and also i now think about particularly socially i really think about like is this something i actually want to do or am i just saying yes for the sake of saying yes and i think definitely before the pandemic i said yes to loads of things i didn't really want to do but i kind of felt either peer pressured into or i felt like we should be doing or whatever and now i think combination of the pandemic and the budgeting just means that i really think like is that what i want to spend my time and money doing or would i rather be doing something else and if the answer is like i'd rather be doing something else i'm just much more comfortable now about saying no thanks or not for me or giving it a, a pass and then when i am doing stuff a it's been a lot better for my energy and stuff but b i really want to do the things i'm doing so i'm enjoying them more if that makes sense and our social life's a little bit less packed and so things feel like a genuine treat like before the pandemic um i think sometimes it felt like a an assault course like the weekend we'd have so much on like friday night saturday night during the day bits and pieces and everything just cramming in it just meant you didn't really enjoy anything properly so i think balancing that needs versus wants i'm really thinking about that um the the process of checking in every week and having that routine is really good um i had a little for those of you who watch other videos on my channel you'll know i had a blip, bit of a blip at the end of july where i just basically didn't cash stuff or check in for a couple of weeks and it just completely i don't know it just completely looked dropped the ball really um and so having the regular routine of, of checking in and making a priority 
and making me think about where I have spent money in the week and where I'm going to spend money the next week and stuff just makes it feel a lot more like I'm in control of it and that I am on top of it and I think I don't know if you ever had that feeling where like you get to a certain point in the month you're just like where did all my money go and that's kind of where I guess I was before I started cash stuffing and doing the budgeting is like I didn't genuinely know where that money was going and I felt a bit out of control on it and I felt like I was doing something wrong whereas now I feel a lot more in control of it and I've got a lot clearer view of what I need to save for what my financial goals are and what I want to do um Another thing that I've changed uh, just recently, actually, but I think it's going to make a difference, um, is front-loading my budgets. So um, up until this month, I've kind of stuffed, if it was four or five weeks in the month, I'd just stuff the budget equally across those weeks. Um, but obviously, kind of had a couple of reasons. Obviously, not every week's the same. So some weeks that was fine. Other weeks I'd be behind or feel like I was behind. Um, but also, you always felt like you were trying to catch up. So like fuel being one that I would... I'm not someone who would go and put in... 20 quid a week for four weeks I'd rather wait and just go once a month and fill my tank up but because the way the cash was working and where my fuel was it wasn't always working out that way so it felt like I was kind of wasting effort by going multiple times to the petrol station just because I hadn't got the cash stuff but because I'd get paid monthly I had the cash there all along I just wasn't stuffing it so this week um this month anyway I'm kicking off so I front loaded some envelopes so this week I've actually stuffed 405 um, which is more than I was stuffing before. Usually it was around two, two fifty, um, and then it's going to drop down in subsequent weeks. But some things like fuel will get fully funded in week one, and then other things like social and spends are getting a bit more in week one to give me that bit of a buffer, um, and then like slightly less throughout the month. So it's all kind of relative, really. I could just cash stuff once a month and put 150 in for social, say. But I think you miss that check in every week then, and you miss keeping on top of it. Um, and it's easy to kind of blow it all quite quickly and then not have more for the rest of the month. So I think it's still right to cash stuff every week, but I'm just going to give myself a bit more in week one um, rather than say, I don't know what that would be, like stuffing 40 quid, say every week for four weeks. I've got 60 in week one and 30 in week two. Um, so front loading, I think, is, a, is it. Um, and then I've also kind of worked out that the accountability works and obviously part of like creating these videos and stuff is to keep myself accountable and to keep myself on track with this because it would be no one knows who I am no one knows I'm doing this um in my real life and so it wouldn't necessarily make sense yet no one would know about it so like this accountability in this community just means that I can um yeah kind of focus on my goals and it sounds weird but it's almost like a bit of me time each week where I just sit down and think about things and kind of yeah more consciously decide how I want to spend my money and what I want to spend it on um and so I've also because of that accountability and knowing how the structures work for me I've started to apply it to other areas of my life so I've just recently started um focusing more on my health and fitness um, and particularly trying to lose some weight and treating calories like a budget has been really helpful but I think it's because I've got into the habits and the practices of the budgeting and knowing that if you go over next one day it's got to come out somewhere else the next and i'm applying the same to kind of my calories um and that's been a really interesting like lens change really um from like how it used to be um so and i think consistently thinking about things in the house and thinking about like our financial investments and stuff and just thinking about where I'm trying to get to rather than just feeling like I'm treading water or like oh I'll get to it one day or I'll think about it next month or next year or whatever um I feel like I've got a much clearer roadmap now of where I'm going and what I want to do um talked a bit about like maybe like losing that payday feeling so I definitely have lost the feast and famine so I don't know about you guys but I would be one of those people who would like I'll get that on payday I'll get that on payday I'll get that on payday and then you spend quite a lot on payday which feels amazing but then the rest of the month feels a bit barren and then you're back into that cycle of like putting things on your baskets or your wish lists um for kind of things you want and I think two things have helped kind of get rid of that firstly is obviously I'm shopping less because I've put myself on the clothing diet I've also said about beauty I'm not going to buy I'm only going to replace beauty products that I use up so I'm not just going to buy a cut nail polish because I like the colour or lipstick because I fancy it. It's got to like replace something that I already use and use regularly. Um, but also because you're spreading out money throughout the month and you've got that regular injection of cash, it just means that I don't feel like that feast and famine stuff. So I don't get that massive high of payday anymore, but then I don't get kind of the, the lowers 
in the rest of the month where you kind of like feel like you haven't got enough money or you, you can't do what you want to do um so that it feels a lot more consistent a lot more in control than that and i think um just taking that longer term view with money and um I think what I might do for 2023 is actually even try an annual budget. So I know pretty much what I get month on month in terms of salary. And I know, uh, like most of major bills, obviously pending um, interest rate rises, how much fuel will go up, food and um, energy and stuff. But generally you can give yourself an idea. So actually thinking about it rather than just a little each month thinking, I'm just putting numbers at the end now here, but like say I've, if I've got 10 grand to invest, okay, right, how am I gonna invest 10 grand? Like what's gonna give me the best return on that investment? And just being a lot more strategic about it. Um, so I've started to think a little bit about sinking funds I'd like for next year, because what I'm hoping is by the end of this year, all of my sinking funds will be fully funded. There will be some that need topping up. So for instance, car will get run down through car insurance and repairs and stuff, and obviously Christmas and gifts. but hopefully you won't have to dip into some of your other emergency or sinking funds that often so um there should be more to kind of add in if that makes sense so i think i'd like to add a sinking fund for a phone next year and um, my phone's up for renewal in the summer and instead of getting another contract phone which cost me like 100 quid a month i'd like to buy the handset out outright um, and then have a much lower bill going forward um, before I got this phone, which obviously I use loads for recording and stuff, and it's absolutely worth it. But my other iPhone before that was about five years old, and I'd obviously switched on to a SIM only contract, and it was much cheaper. So I, I'd like to buy my handset out, right? Um, so put some money aside for that. I'd also like to um, have a sinking fund for appliances. So things like the dishwasher, washing machine, hoover so that if and when they do go rather than having to dip into my home fund which is really for more fun purchases like sofas and decorating and things um or having to hit my emergency fund that i've got a fund there um to kind of deal with those kind of unpleasant things so that's kind of all taken care of um and then we starting like traveling experiences so i did initially start stuffing that and then stopped doing that while i focused on my more like grown up boring um sinking funds but i'd really like to start doing that but again taking that annual view about being intentional how much do i want to spend on travel this year booking some trips that kind of meet those goals and then having a bit in reserve but not just kind of saying yes to everything or just kind of going with the flow really so those are all the things i've learned over six months i think kind of to summarize i found it such a useful process and i recommend it to anyone no matter how your budget looks and that's what's great about this community like everyone's budget looks different everyone's budget looks um yeah like i'm obviously in the higher income bracket but there are other people who uh really don't have as much but everyone's kind of playing the same game which is just making sure that our money is meeting what we need it to and want it to and we're focusing on the right things and minimizing spend when we don't want or need it or it doesn't contribute to our goals um so i would say yeah if you're thinking about doing it absolutely do it um and don't think you have to be perfect straight away all of us iterate and change stuff the world is changing all the time so it's just about responding to that and kind of having a plan um and i think overall it's helped me feel so much more in control so much more to take a step back really and think about it a bit more strategically and a bit more with a bit more focus rather than just kind of reacting to stuff that happened which can only be a good thing um yeah so there you go so that's what i've learned in the last six months like not every month is different Take it as it goes, think about it, use it as an opportunity to reflect and check in with yourself. Um, but overall, um, just giving you that sense of comfort and assurance that you're kind of on the right track and you're doing what you need to do is just like such a lovely feeling. So, um, right guys, thanks for listening. I appreciate it was a little bit different from a normal video, um, but I hope you're all well. And then I think, um, I'm going to keep a bit of a running list of things I want to think about for 2023 because that will come around quickly. We're heading quite very soon into September, which I can't believe, and then it'll be the run down to Christmas and then it'll be 2023. So I think I'm going to keep start keeping a running list of things I want to think about for 2023. And then hopefully when I do my next six month video around then, um, I'll have some even more to tell you. So there you go. All right, guys, I hope you're all well and I will see you soon.